Excuse me. Hey. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How was your day? Fine, how did yeah. we meet? What? How did we meet? Why did you say that? So I'm just curious. Why? How do you think you know me? Do I not know you? No. That's so awkward because I'm working for a day. Hi guys, this is Sam from Fluid Social, talking to you from Shoreditch. So I'm going to show you a rather different uh, infield interaction uh, with a girl that I spoke to, a very sweet girl, who thought I was her hinge date. She was waiting for a date, I came up to talk to her and she mistook me for the guy that she was going on a date with. So um, awkwardness, a little bit on her part ensued. Uh, and basically what you can get from the interaction is me trying to basically um, build comfort as much as possible and show her that it's not awkward. It's a mistake that I make all the time as well and that it's completely natural and there's no problem. And then uh, basically try and build a, a little connection from there without jeopardizing her potential hinge state with the other chap. So I hope you guys enjoy this one um, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Excuse me. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How was your day? Fine. How did yeah. we meet? What? How did we meet? Why did you say that? So when I went up to her, I said, excuse me, to open the conversation. She just said, oh, hey, how's your day? And acted like we knew each other. So I went along with it and then said, uh, how do we meet? I'm just curious. Because I thought that I would have met her before. Like she was a, a, an old friend or something. I actually do have some difficulties recognizing faces sometimes of people that I know but don't know that well. So I was like, how did we meet? Because uh, I could tell that this was gonna be a little uncomfortable unless I figured that out early on. Uh, and that obviously caused a little bit of confusion for her. But again, sometimes when you're so relaxed about it and you're not you know, making a big deal out of the approach, people will have these moments where they might think that they know you from somewhere else. What? How did we meet? Why did you say that? So I'm just curious. Why? How do you think you know me? Do I not know you? No. That's so awkward because I'm working for Jay. That's amazing. How is he? Where did you meet him? This is really awkward. Right. No, 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 it's so fine. It's not, it's not awkward. I was actually going to come and talk to you because I thought you looked nice. Oh, thank you. That's so awkward because he's blonde and I was like, you look slightly different than how No, no. Look. So I actually, like... have, uh, I actually have an issue with faces where I can't remember whose face that I know yeah. well. So when you said hi, yeah. I was like, oh shit, I've just oh come to tell this someone. Is so awkward. No, it's not awkward. Sorry. It's not okay. awkward. It's literally random and quite cool, okay. in a no, way. it is quite cool. I quite enjoy uh, the spontaneity <laughs> of this situation. So she was getting uncomfortable, so she said this is really awkward because she felt like she'd made a mistake. And so at that point, I just wanted to explain to her, no, I actually have a problem where I, where I can't recognize people's faces, to sort of bring us together and say, don't, you don't have to worry about anything. I thought it was my mistake, so don't worry, you haven't made a mistake, there's no social faux pas, because at that point, if I don't bring myself to that level and really try and build that comfort that she hasn't done anything weird, she will associate me with an awkward mistake that she made in the past. And no one wants to meet up with someone that they associate with an awkward mistake. So the job, if someone is nervous or they feel anxious or they feel awkward about it, is to just build as much comfort, relate to them on a human level as much as you can, so that they see that you're not judging them and you don't think they're stupid or that you don't think they're weird for doing that. So that's all you need to do in that situation is build that human connection and show them that they haven't made a bad mistake. I um, panicked, okay. So, well, I was what's just like, name? oh shit, do we know each other? Because then I was like, what's her name? Uh, I'm Sam, nice to meet Charlotte, you. Nice Charlotte, nice to meet you. Uh, so you're meeting a date on yeah. Happen here now, right? Somewhere Charlotte. On Old Street. Well, I don't want to make this genuinely awkward because okay. between us yeah. it's fine yeah between the guy that you're about to meet it could be awkward um but i want to be a little bit cheeky and ask yeah. if i can get your number so sure. that i can message yeah. you and if the happen date doesn't go well hinge um, hinge okay so again a lot of people think that you know you have to build connection whatever happens stay in as long as you can build as much of a, um build as much as you can but and that's true in most cases. You do want to build as good a connection as you can with another individual. However, in this case, if you find yourself in a position where you're hanging around could cause potential jeopardy for her lifestyle, her situation right now. For example, um, if you're talking to a girl who's working in a, in a place and her manager's there, the longer you stay there, 
the more awkward she feels that her manager's watching, she's not going to respond to you, even if you're saying the right things and you feel really natural, because she associates you with making her embarrassed in front of a position of authority. In the same way in this position, if I'd hung around, even if it, you know, I was feeling good and I was feeling really present, she would always associate with me with destroying a potential opportunity to meet a cool guy that she's been talking to. So the wise thing to do over everything else is to look after her interests, her life interests first, and show that you are socially intelligent enough to understand that if her actual date turns up now, you don't want to bugger that situation up for her almightily. It's better to be graceful and be elegant and just go for the number then and there in this situation uh, to avoid you know, making it awkward for her and her date and her having the wrong associations with you. So I just said, in that case, I said, look, it's not awkward between us. There's not, this is cool, this is spontaneous, I like it, but it could be awkward with the guy that you're meeting. So I'm gonna be very cheeky and ask for your phone number now so that I don't create an awkward situation for you in the future. And that's what I'd recommend if on the off chance you find yourself in a similar situation. Uh, it's probably about one in a hundred chaps, so I wouldn't worry about it. Happens better than him, right? Quick, right, you can tell him that we're, I'm an old friend, right? Oh, that's so funny. That's okay. I'm just an old friend. My name's Charlotte. It's pretty. Beli it's actually pretty. Like. That's so funny. Kind of feels like that now, anyway. Like I feel. Oh. Like, okay, Charlotte. So it was lovely to meet you, darling. Lovely enjoy, you. enjoy Have your, day. enjoy your oh, day. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, and thank I don't you. mean that entirely. I kind of hope it goes badly. God, I don't <laughs> enjoy. See you later, Charlotte. So at this point in the conversation, um, you know, I said, look, we can just pretend that we're an old friend. Again, you've heard me rattle on about personal narratives, essentially finding that unique point of connection with a woman where you have a, a thread of banter or a thread of humor, a storyline that transgresses what other people know about her and it's just specific to you and her. So in this case, our storyline is that she's an old friend, right? That was the way that we'd um, alleviate the potentially awkward situation when her date turns up and she's talking with another guy or giving another guy her number. So by just creating that little bit at the end, that gives me something that I could message her saying, hey, it's your oldest friend here, you know? It gives me a load of um, ideas for how I can communicate with her in the future. I could talk about how I'm her fake hinge date or her replacement hinge date or I could call her my oldest friend and by that way I'm building on the connection that we built in the initial interaction. So it creates this sort of little game that we can play together where uh, we've got this story that only her and I understand and then I just wanted to get her number as quick as possible so that the other guy didn't see anything. Again it's not disrespectful, um, it's not a problem she's a single girl she's dating online you've come up to her in the daytime there's nothing disrespectful about asking a girl for her phone number if she's waiting for a date she's looking for a guy and preferably she's looking for a confident guy who goes after what he wants and doesn't outsource his dating life to a large corporation without his best interest necessarily in mind so always go for these opportunities don't feel awkward if she's waiting for a date use it as an opportunity to build a connection and if nothing else just to get her more socially warmed up and comfortable for when her date does arrive. And if it does go somewhere, then maybe you've got a great opportunity and a great story to tell for the future. Hi guys, this is Sam from Fluid Social, and today I'm talking to you from Brick Lane. I wanna tell you about an exclusive group that I'm starting. I've created a Facebook group called the Loner to Lover Group, which is based on the system that I've been creating over the past few months that will be released on the 1st of January 2021 called Loner to Lover. Now this system teaches you how to go from a guy who has zero experience with women, a lot of failed attempts but zero experience, to being in a successful relationship and everything in between. Whatever experience level you are, I've created a system where you can find out where you are and learn what you need to do to progress from Loner to Lover. Now this Facebook group is going to include exclusive videos, exclusive tips and live Q&As on a weekly basis. It's also going to contain a large group of men and similar like-minded individuals for you to network with, for you to socialize with and go out and improve your social and dating lives together. 
This will be a paid group, but for the moment, I'm making it completely free because I want to get that core group of guys together who are really, really keen and who really want that extra push, those extra tips from me, that extra bit of motivation to get out there and improve your social life. So if you feel like you're one of those guys, if you feel like you're ready to get that extra step, to get that spring in your step and actually get started improving your social skills, your dating life, and your ability to go out, network, and cold approach women in the daytime, then follow the link in the description to the Facebook group, Loner to Lover, and we'll get you started with the first Q&As. Feel free to drop me any questions on the Facebook group, and I will answer them in a Q&A, or I will type them out for you and network like, with like-minded individuals so you can improve your social, dating, and cold approach today. This has been Sam from Brick Lane. I look forward to seeing you on the Facebook group. Sam out.